Ladies and gentlemen, so you back on this is Russia thinks Ukraine's F-16s will be carrying nukes. This was not sandbox, few months old, but still, like, what? How can F-16s even carry nukes? F-16 is smaller. Like, I mean, I guess if I F-35 can carry nukes, sure, F-16 can too. But I, is it that simple? I, isn't it supposed to be upgraded in a way that it can carry a big nuke, like a you know nuclear payload? I mean, why are they worried about F? I mean, yeah, I get it. Like Ukraine has F-16, so they're like, oh wait a minute, F-16 is going to nuke. They want to nuke us. US is going to give them nukes, type of way. I don't know. I, I, where did that come from? They're just saying that, or like some kind of intelligence came through. Sandbox is a great channel. I've been watching his videos a lot because a lot of big channels basically talk about him, like how he's an expert and he knows people that are in the thing. So you know, he has this first story in. Uh, first-hand information to a lot of things. It's not he said, she said, he, he can get a proper information. This is really interesting. So let's go this one. Remember people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe. You can really help out this channel by helping the algorithm and things. And yeah, if you want me to do any specific, you know, reactions, comment down, but comment down the name of the video. Don't just generally say that, like, because I, I don't know, I'm not so good at, nah. It's not that I'm not so good at finding video. I can find video, but it's just like really hard to find video because there's so many of the similar type of videos. So comment on specific channel you want me to react to. And yeah, let's do it. So if American F-16s can deliver nuclear weapons, does that mean Ukraine's F-16s will be able to do the same? That's a So F-16 can do that. Apparently they are fitted with that uh, type of thing. I keep seeing pop up f 16 cs can do it. In the comments beneath just about any conversation about F-16s arriving in Ukraine over the past few days. And the truth is, the people posting these comments are either intentionally advancing a Kremlin-backed propaganda narrative, or unfortunately they were simply fooled by one. Because the truth is, this entire argument is not based in reality and is rather predicated on the general public's lack of understanding about nuclear warfare doctrine, tactical aircraft, and nuclear weapons in general. So what do you say we put this myth to bed for good? Let's dive into what actually makes an aircraft nuclear capable, and what Ukraine's F-16s will actually be able to do. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. Now, when I tell you that this whole Ukrainian nuclear F-16 story is born out of Russian propaganda, I'm not speaking in vague terms. This narrative very literally originates with Russian foreign minister and ah. Kremlin mouthpiece Sergei Lavrov, who planted the seed with reporters last June. I'm guessing this is the same guy a U.S. was claiming that uh, Trump mistakenly or so gave away a lot of sensitive information to when he went to the... White House, I'm pretty sure this is the guy, right? I'll quote him directly. We must keep in mind that one of the modifications of the F-16 can accommodate nuclear weapons. No matter what modification of the aircraft will be supplied, we will treat them as nuclear capable, and we will consider this step of the United States and NATO as purposeful provocation. If they do not understand this, then they are worthless as military strategists and planners. All right, here's what I'm going to say about that. Look, if you are claiming a lot of things that like we're going to treat this as you as a NATO provoking us and like we'll treat that as basically a nuclear plane. If you're going to make statements like this just to like force or like scare somebody in the front, you better have something to answer with, right? Because if you say that and like Ukraine F-16 still do that thing and you do nothing, you make another statement like this, Again, you do nothing when opposing party clearly ignores what you just said. At that point, people will start to think like you're just going to say things and it doesn't matter what you say, right? At that point, it will ring hollow, right? Which is kind of fucked up thing. So you should be very careful when you like put statements out like that. Like we're going we're gonna to treat this as like a provocation and we will treat this as a nuclear uh, plane. Implying that whenever if F-16 comes closer to it, we just assume that's a nuclear plane, we'll respond. And if you don't respond in any way, it's like people will not, you know, uh, care about what you have to say after that. That's the problematic thing, right? It's, it's, that, it's that like story, somebody screaming, there's a tiger, there's a tiger, and no tiger. When actual tiger came, nobody came, right? 
dollars. Now you'd think that someone with such harsh words for military strategists and planners would have the expertise to know that you can deliver nuclear weapons with any aircraft. And in fact, the provisions and modifications made to tactical well. aircraft like the F-16 to deliver nukes are actually all about adhering to internationally recognized standards for safety. And the truth is, you could drop a nuclear bomb out of a blimp if you wanted to. In fact, during the Cold War, the US was fielding oh, yeah. nuclear artillery shells and even nukes in backpacks, like the special atomic demolitions munitions, or SADM backpacks that were designed to be delivered behind enemy lines by Green Beret teams on skis. The truth of the matter is, nuclear detonations begin with a good old-fashioned chemical explosion, just like any conventional ordnance. And that yeah, this is insane, right? When they, when they develop nuclear weapons, we can do anything with this. We can do this, we can make artillery, we can put it in backpacks. Imagine all the possibilities, then like castle bravo and like czar bomba shit like that happened everybody just saw the devastation like you know what let's scale back let's scale back let's not do all this shit everybody got scared and that means you could design a nuclear bomb to detonate just like pretty much any other old bomb but the reason why aircraft like the f-16 see significant modifications before they can carry and deploy nuclear weapons is all about adhering to american regulation and international law when it comes to leveraging nukes and the list of american aircraft equipped to deliver nuclear weapons may be longer than you realize we'll start with the bombers like america's stealth I mean. heavy payload strategic bomber the b2 spirit which is equipped to deliver not just b61 nuclear bombs but even b83s which are america's largest nuclear bomb in the arsenal I mean, they know that B-2s can deliver nukes. Yeah, I guess everybody knows that, right? That, the, the, that's their bombers. They better do that. But I think the whole point of Russia claiming that because you're giving Ukrainians F-16, if you gave Ukraine a B-2s, they'll be screaming up about that. Personal. These weapons have a maximum yield of 1.2 megatons, which Damn. is about 75 times the destructive capacity of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Though these weapons are being phased out in favor of the smaller yield B61 TAC 13 with a comparably paltry 360 kiloton yield. Now, the B-52 used to be equipped to carry these same bombs, but has since transitioned to strictly carrying the AGM-86B nuclear air-launched cruise missile, which has a maximum range of north of 1,500 miles and carries the W-80 nuclear warhead, a variable-yield weapon with a maximum destructive capacity of 150 kilotons. The forthcoming B-21 Raider is already slated to carry the new B-61 TAC-12 nuclear gravity bomb that's expected to replace a whole slew of older B61 class weapons. The B61 TAC-12 has a maximum yield of some 340 kilotons, but it will almost certainly also carry the B61 TAC-13, a larger yield 360 kiloton weapon that was only recently announced. And it seems pretty likely- I get it, but that was the, okay, 340, 360, that's not that much of a difference, but that matter. Like, why create this? If you do like 700 kiloton, I'm like, oh, that's a big up. But it's like, kind of the same. That it'll eventually carry the AGM-181 long-range standoff weapon, or LRSO, mm -hmm. a nuclear cruise missile slated to replace that AGM-86 carried by the B-52. The B-1B Lancer may have a larger payload capacity than Bone. any of these other bombers, at some 75,000 pounds, but is actually no longer nuclear capable. Yeah, bone is just insane. I thought bone's not gonna be that good. It's just made to go in speed because how it looks. Then I realized, wait a minute, it has much higher capacity than B-52 or any other B plane. It's insanely fast. It's everything, just not stealthy. That's it. If you if you remove the stealth capabilities, you can't touch bone. Basically, that's how powerful it is. With its ability to deliver nuclear arms removed as a part of the Strategic Arms Reduction or START Treaty signed between the United States and soon to be former Soviet Union back in 1991. And then when it comes to fighters, the F 15E Strike Eagle, F 16C and D Fighting Falcon, and F 35A Lightning II are all certified to deliver B 61 series nuclear gravity bombs, mm. all of which will be converted into B 61. I think the most threatening of all that is F-35 and B-2 and B-21s, right? 
insane level of stealth B2 and B21 obviously they are the north of Grumman insane uh, you know like what is it like they even hide the heat from the exhaust or whatever and also F35 which is like another insane uh, you know like stealth plane those are the threatening they can nuke you and run away before you even realize it like your radar will pick it up but it will be too late before it pick it up Attack 12 variable yield weapons and the ongoing service life extension program. The U.S. Navy Super Hornets were also slated to carry these weapons at one point, but really? were removed from that list in 2021 because the U.S. Navy didn't see a need. But I mean, yeah, I mean, you have too many shit that can carry. Like, okay, let's put aircraft carrier F-18 as well. Like, no, man, come on. Just to prove my point about how any aircraft could potentially deliver nuclear weapons, America's C-5 cargo plane successfully demonstrated its ability to air launch a Minuteman 1 ICBM out the back of the aircraft in 1974, <laughs> demonstrating that the United States could air launch intercontinental ballistic missiles from cargo planes Minuteman. anywhere in the world. But the U How the fuck they drop a Minuteman, basically a silo missile, ground-based silo missile form of cargo plane? Like, screw this. Look at all the makeshift thing we can do. I don't care. That's what they're saying. Basically. Plus, ultimately opted to shelve this capability because they knew the Soviets couldn't counter it. And the concern was that it could destabilize that delicate balance of mutual... I mean, yeah, they <laughs> this is so fucked up. Wait a minute. We have nuclear capabilities the Soviets don't have or nobody has. Wait a minute, this is the specific reason they might panic and do something, you know, uh, drastic or something. So, okay, let's cut it back so everybody feels safe. That's that level of shit. Actually assured destruction. But other than air-launched ICBMs, which I suppose would have some sort of hybrid launch procedure that I can't really speak to, America's nuclear gravity bombs and the aircraft that deliver them come with a long list of systems on board that are not meant to make these aircraft better suited for delivering nuclear weapons. Okay, I'm pausing too much, but I'm still like hanged on that Minuteman thing. Th the whole point of that missile, it has to like aim up, right? I mean... It can do like whatever, but it, how did they made it so, I guess, aerodynamics? Well, no, aerodynamics would pull it back in. So if you drop and it goes nose down, how did it, how did it correct itself before launching that rocket? Because that's how Minuteman missile works. Did they figure out some way so the missile always points up before firing the rocket? Weapons, but rather make it more difficult to do so, all in the name of safety. These precautions begin with the weapon itself and extend all the way into the cockpit, starting with the Permissive Action Link, or PAL, and the Command Disablement System, or CDS, that it ties into. Now, the PAL is a device mounted on or in the nuclear weapon that renders the weapon inoperable unless the user enters the appropriate code or combination. Mm -hmm. And the Command Disablement System, or CDS... Movies have run this into death, basically, showing that over and over again. Yes, is the system it ties into to temporarily disable that warhead. Then you have the Active Protection System, or APS, which will permanently disable the weapon if it recognizes unauthorized access into that PAL device. And finally, we have the Trajectory Sensing Subsystem, which will not allow the warhead to activate until accelerometers inside the weapon recognize that it's been dropped. Inside the cockpit, pilots have a laundry list of procedures to adhere to, including a nuclear consent switch to make sure you can't drop a nuclear weapon by accident. But again, importantly, if that weapon has not been armed through the PAL device, it will not detonate, even if you drop it. And what this ultimately means is that while the U.S. Defense Department has been clear that any aircraft could potentially carry nuclear weapons, aircraft that are specially equipped to leverage American nuclear bombs carry a long list of systems on board that are meant to marry up to the long list of safety systems that are present in the weapon, effectively providing the keys necessary to arm and drop. Yeah, I understand the safety limit, but this also makes me think that doesn't this increase its failure rate? The more restricts and the more thresholds there are, the more things that can go wrong before detonation. So let's say in some event you have to use nuke because your opposing party is also using nuke. If you have that much restriction, there's a higher chance your nuke will fail because something will go wrong. But I guess in the name of safety, it's like, okay, I guess we'll take that chance because this is really fucked up, right? Like nukes are properly fucked up, so you need to have that kind of restriction. Even like, you always say that, saw that red button in president desk. 
that, that doesn't mean much, right? I guess it meant a lot in Cold War, but since then it doesn't mean much. Even if you press it, like some people call it, are you sure about that? Yeah, yeah, that's why I press the button. And they're like, a lot of chain of command, like, are you sure, are you sure? And then people will do it. There you go. Drop a nuke. And while these safety systems are present on American F-16s, F-15s, and even F-35s now, they are not present on the F-16AMs that Ukraine will be receiving. So let's circle back to Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, because within just a few weeks of making that initial claim, he was presented with this information about the F-16 AMs Ukraine will be receiving not being equipped with the requisite hardware or systems necessary to leverage nuclear weapons. And he basically argued that Russian forces couldn't possibly discern between two different versions of one aircraft, with one equipped to carry nuclear weapons and other others not. I'll quote him directly so you know I'm not taking them out of context. In the course of combat operations, our servicemen are not going to sort out whether each particular aircraft of this type is equipped to deliver nuclear weapons or not. We will regard the very fact that the Ukrainian armed forces have such systems as a threat from the West and the nuclear sphere. And See, that's what I'm saying. You constantly say we will retaliate as a nuclear threat. And when they actually get F-16, you don't retaliate. At that point, like your words doesn't mean much after that. People will not trust it. So this is why you should be very careful when you want to make threat and make only when you feel it's absolutely necessary. So your word actually carry weight, right? Uh, Ukraine still got F-16s, right? Like, and there you go, F-16, I'm pretty sure right now it's working there, right? So it's just like how many claims you're gonna make like this? People, people like, oh, you, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna care about any word you say because you say that all the time, type of way. And what fucked up thing about that is, there will be a time where like it's the last straw type of thing, right? And when Russia does retaliate, people are not gonna like, you know, like take their threat seriously. So it's fucked up for the both sides, not just one, right? Uh, I don't know how to say that. It's just, this is why I always scream like, oh, fuck me, you know, this is bad, this is bad. And people are like, why are you bitching so much? But, but I see all these things, that's why, right? Not now, maybe a few, few, months, few months from now, a few year, couple years from now, whenever, right? So you need to maintain it for safety, right? Both, I like how US basically dropped that Minuteman dropping from the cargo plane program because it's, de you know, uh, destabilized the power balance. They don't want that. Otherwise, Soviet Union might be too, you know, like scared and back against the wall type of an actually attack US out of fear. So they have to like assure everybody, see, everybody's at the same level type of way. So you need to make your threats when you actually want to make it and not all the time. Because if people don't take their threat seriously and when you actually do make proper threat, which you're going to follow on, people are not going to take you seriously and you're going to have to attack because you're going to do that anyway. That's what the threat was. Everybody's fucked, right? I don't know. And that really leads me to question Lavrov's chops as a military strategist and planner all over again. Because you'd think he, of all people, would know that Ukraine already operates two tactical aircraft with nuclear-capable variants Mix. out there. Aircraft they got from Russia, including the MiG-29 and, notably, the Su-24, which is also operated by Russia's ally on Ukraine's northern border, Belarus. And in fact, just two years ago, Belarus announced their intentions to begin arming their own Su-24s with nuclear weapons provided by Russia. In fact, Ukraine has even already received MiG-29s from NATO ally nations so far in the conflict. And while even the nuclear-capable versions of these aircraft were never equipped to leverage American nuclear weapons, we've already seen Ukraine overcome similar challenges with conventional systems like the AGM-88 Harm, the Storm Shadow cruise missile, and the ADM-160 miniature air-launched decoy. So it stands to reason that either Russian forces are somehow capable of very quickly discerning between nuclear-capable and non-nuclear-capable variants of the Su-24 and the MiG-29, it's just those pesky F-16s that give them trouble, or this is all nonsense. Russia is certainly well aware that Ukraine has no nuclear weapons because up until 1994, they did. But then Ukraine, Russia, and the United States signed an agreement, commonly called the Budapest Memorandum, in which Ukraine agreed to surrender their leftover nukes from the Soviet era back to Russia in exchange for assurances that Russia would never invade them. 
And while Russia keeps suggesting that the West, and namely the United States, would provide Ukraine with the nukes they'd need, by my tally, it's been Russia threatening nuclear war no fewer than a dozen times since their invasion of Ukraine began, all while NATO officials call for nuclear de-escalation. The real intent behind this whole narrative is simply to sow doubt and anxiety in the Western populace in hopes of eroding Western support for Ukraine to help Russia accomplish what they've failed to do on the battlefield for the past two and a half years now, secure victory. Because if the world devolves into nuclear war, we all lose, Russia included. And while we should take their threats of nuclear war very seriously, we shouldn't take their claims at face value. And with that ends yet another edition of Air Power. Yep, there you go. Yeah. Nuclear war is like everybody's fucked, right? Nobody's gonna be like, yeah. Uh, one thing's for damn sure, like, even if like the few countries nukes themselves the world is fucked anyway because global economy will collapse and everything will collapse basically there's gonna be ramifications like untouchable so everybody's screwed basically at that point if everybody just doesn't say fuck it and just like everybody responds that's gonna be even worse but yeah that's the thing about russia right like their economy is already like uh, you know restriction from every other country now they are in wartime economy where they're just like basically like iron curtain level thing they're doing their own thing Right, have to trade goods just to like you know try you know like t take things from other countries like North Korea. The economy is already like that. Now, if their condition gets worse and worse, yeah, nuclear weapon might not feel like that far off thing to them. This is what I'm saying all the time. Like, you don't know what someone's mentality is, or how they're thinking, how they're thinking. Their back is against the wall. That's a fucked up time, right? You don't want to test that. So yeah, but yeah, F-16s like they already have nuclear powered planes. What you're talking about? F-16 alone, it's not gonna do anything. But yeah. Rebel, if you like my next video, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.